This review has been made possible by Chevrolet of Naperville. As you know, Chevy has tons of brand new cars and trucks available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to ChevroletofNaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 2018 Smart 4.2 Passion Electric. Up front, it's an electric motor. And down below is a one-speed automatic transmission. If you'd like to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. I'll be writing a complete article about the Smart 4.2 Passion Electric. As well as if you guys would like to see my videos early, head on over to patreon.com slash shooting underscore cars, where for only $2 a month, you can see all my videos before they're made public here on YouTube. But let's get back to that electric drivetrain. Well, it, it's definitely interesting. You get a lot of power and torque out of the electric drivetrain because it has that instant torque. It feels good. It feels solid. It doesn't really feel underpowered for such a small car. It feels adequate with probably, I'd say, the Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf felt a little bit quicker, but then again, the Nissan Leaf had bigger motors, it's a bigger vehicle, it can have more batteries and stuff like that. The range on these cars is about 115 miles, uh, which isn't a whole lot, but we'll be talking more about that towards the end of the video when I give my overall consensus of the car. That being said, it does make a pretty cool noise when accelerating. It does sound pretty futuristic. Let's see if I can get a good audio clip here. I don't know if that worked or not, but it sounds really cool and it's pretty easy to drive. It feels pretty much like a normal car, minus the fact that it never actually shifts. Now, because it is an electric drivetrain, interestingly enough, you actually get better mileage in town than you do on the highway because the motor has to work less in town and work more on the highway because it's constantly at that higher speed. So let's move on to the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a giant speedometer that is surrounding a little screen that's giving me a couple little things. First of all, it has my mileage. We can scroll down here. Miles till empty, average speed, stuff like that. It has my eco percent score, which I am at 75%, which I'd like to think is pretty good. Kilowatts per 100 miles, energy flow, battery life remaining next service next service is due in 10,000 miles and our settings and last but not least our speed in actual digits on the steering wheel on the left you get your buttons to control that center screen and then cruise control and your cancel button for cruise control then on the right you get your audio settings up top you actually get an interesting gauge it looks aftermarket it looks like an aftermarket afr gauge or boost gauge you'd find in a honda civic but it's actually your charge so it's actually showing me how much power i'm using right now so i'm using probably about 10 percent power we'll floor it and we're right up into the 100 percent power inside that gauge is a smaller gauge that's for your battery percentage to the left i do have a vent which i'll talk about the vents as a whole all of the vents in the car they're these little ball so when you could see the word smart they're off and then you can twist them to open them up and turn them into vents I personally think that these are a little cheap, but again, I'll get to that later on because I, I want to talk about the price of this car at the end of the video. Down to my far left, I do have a button for the tailgate. And then over here, I have power windows, one touch down, one touch back up. To the right, I have two vents on the dash, and then I have the little infotainment screen. This is going to give me all my information about the car. Uh, it's going to give me my eco score, which I've actually now increased to 76. Navigation, outside temperature, all of that stuff will be found in the center screen. Really simple. I think it has what? One, two, three, four, I guess technically five buttons. So you have volume home and then also volume up and down you can hit. Really super simple and I like that a lot. Down below the center screen, you do get your climate controls, which something interesting about them is that when you zoom over whatever climate setting you want, whatever temperature, it actually has a sort of magnifying glass in the button. So it makes it look bigger, which I think is really cool. I do think that that's unique. I think it's kind of special. This is a unique, special car. So I like it when they give you little cool, interesting stuff like that. Then you have two cup holders and the shifter. To the left of the shifter, you get an eco button. This is going to make car more economically efficient. But then to the right of the shifter, you have a pretty cool button. So 
this, I don't know how to define this car, if it's a full convertible or not, because you still do get these rails. So I'm gonna pull over up here and I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by if it's a convertible or not. So put it into park, although you can do it and drive at low speeds, just safer to do it in park when you can. So we'll move the roof back. And as you can see, the whole roof opens up. This is a really cool feature, but in the words of the late Billy Mays, rest in peace, but wait, there's more. Hit it again, and the back half goes down. It's sort of like a Fiat 500-ish. Um, this really offers a really wide open air experience, which is great. I can't smell what that factory's making over there, but we could put that back up. I do like that they give you either sort of a target top option or the full convertible. It is sprinkling. A little bit out so i am going to leave this shut for the remainder of the review but i really do like that this is the key feature of i would say this smart car is the roof i think it just adds so much to the interior makes the car so much more alive you can do so much more for an open sunny day you really can't beat a retractable roof one last thing about the interiors you do get jbl speakers which is a nice feature moving towards the back of the car and then we'll come back up here. It does have a tailgate, which is kind of weird. I didn't expect it to have a, like a tailgate like a truck, but it does have a tailgate. You can fold it down. Storage room is not going to be your friend in this car because this thing is so tiny. But let's get back up into the interior. This is my biggest gripe with the smart car is the interior. It feels kind of cheap. It feels plasticky. They did use a different material for the dash, but even that material it almost looks like those free jerseys you get from the park district that are reversible. You know, it's like blue and then yellow. So depending on what team you are, or oh, we're yellow today, you gotta switch your jersey. It looks like that material, which I normally wouldn't mind. But all of this considered, 115 miles of range, iffy interior, only two doors. The sticker price for this smart car was $28,000. $28,000. Honestly, I would not pay that for this car. I think that is an outrageous amount of money for a two-door, 115-mile range electric car. Granted, it is an electric car, and it is a newer technology, and I'm sure the batteries in here are great and, and all of that stuff, but I just could not justify spending $28,000 on a car like this. I recently reviewed a 2018 Chevy Malibu, brand new, off the lot, $24,000, and you get a 1.5 turbo engine and the ability to carry five people in the car. I just think that that's more bang for your buck than the smart car. That being said, this is on Chevy's used car lot. They are not asking $28,000 for it. I will leave a link to it down below in the description if you would like to buy this exact smart car. They have given it a hefty, hefty discount. So you can, I, I can justify it for a lower price. I can justify owning this. You know, if you're gonna live in a city where parking is an issue, if it's just you, if you don't really have to carry people around, if you don't have kids, if you just need to get around downtown Chicago once, twice a week, you just need to drive a little far, maybe you just, you go out and visit your parents once a month or something and you want your own car, this might be a good option for you. If you, if you have the money, if you can justify the pricing, this is a very good option, because honestly, I'm comfortable. Yeah, the materials in here aren't great. The vents, I think, are a little cheesy but you're not taking this thing on a road trip. You're not living out of this thing. You're not trying to wow your business associates by this thing. I mean, this thing is tiny. Look at me standing next to it. This car is small. There's just no two ways about it. I was so weirded out when I was walking up to it because the door handle for the door is right next to the tail light. Show me another car where the door handle for the front door is next to the tail light. I'll wait. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I hope you guys learned something about the Smart for Two Passion Electric. I wanna give a huge thank you to Chevrolet of Naperville. This is one of their used cars. As you guys know, Chevy of Naperville has been absolutely awesome. And they've been even more awesome with this review because I actually filmed this review a week ago. But as I mentioned in my Mazda 6 review, I actually unfortunately had a SD card go corrupt on me and I lost this review. And so I, I called up Chevy and I said, hey, look, I lost the review. That's totally my fault. My SD card just stopped wanting to be an SD card. 
and they said, no problem, when can we get you back in to drive it again? So they've been absolutely great, totally great service. And because April is Autism Awareness Month, they are doing a test drive for a cause. So you can go in, test drive any Chevrolet car, and they will donate $20 to Turning Point. Turning Point is a school for autistic kids who would normally not get the help that they need in public schools. So they can go to Turning Point and their families can be at ease knowing that their kid is getting the proper help and the proper education that they deserve. So definitely go check out Chevy, test drive a car, and uh, it's for a good cause. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, I, I